Welcome to the Vincent and Leslie Prince Raymond Cultural Center. All right, let's take a look around. Come on in. So here we are on the completed building, four year project, thank you pandemic. And you are in the main gallery, which will be used for art exhibitions, for public gatherings, for educational opportunities, uh, and will also be a primary space for our resident artists to exhibit their work um, at the end of each of the residency segments that we do. We do. So we're having a grand opening. The grand opening is on the 25th of March, and it is going to feature the works of creative people from Kent County. So we have more than 60 people signed up to submit a work that is somewhere in the realm of 12 inches by 12 inches, whether that is two dimensional or three dimensional. <clears throat> and we are really excited because we're getting a very, very wide range of art uh, from all different mediums and materials. Um, not only are we celebrating the visual arts and or literary arts in here, but on that very same day, we're also going to be having a concert at the theater at seven o'clock um, and that will celebrate the performing arts. Um, so, why don't I show you around the rest of the building? We have a brand new bathroom, <laughs> which is really beautiful. In here we have a conference room and um, we're really excited. Eventually we'll have an actual conference table that will seat up to 12, maybe even 14 people. Um, and we also installed sort of state-of-the-art uh, equipment to make virtual meetings um, easier and more successful. Uh, what's great about this space is we're gonna make this space available to the community as well. So any of our grantee organizations or partner organizations are welcome to come to schedule time to come and be in here if they need to have board meetings or uh, committee meetings or things like that. And so long as we're not using it, we'll try and make it as available as we can uh, for other groups throughout the county. Fantastic. Yeah. You'll notice on the uh, wall, the original town arts building sign was preserved. So we have to give a shout out to Brian Thompson from Red Door Construction. Uh, he actually was the one that pulled that out of the building when, long before we bought it, uh, when he was in here doing some uh, stabilization work. Uh, and after he found out that we bought it, he asked if we wanted it and I said, yes I do. Um, Leslie will be surprised by that when she comes in for our board meeting tomorrow night. In here, you are now seeing, well, some of our move-in mess, but also we're now in the residency creative space. So the resident artists who stay with us are each going to have their own studio to work in. We're trying to be as multidisciplinary as possible with artists. So we actually have what will be a sound studio. Um, we took special precautions to soundproof this room so that a musician can work in here. We're gonna be setting up um, a high quality electric keyboard and computer system for musicians and composers. It also might be a great place for a writer who needs a little bit more quiet. And as we go down the hall, we've got yet another fabulous new bathroom. <laughs> um, the blinds are coming. <laughs> and then here we are in the artist space. So the artists will each get a studio of their own, um, like the music studio. We'll set this up with an art table for them to work on. There'll be some homosote panels on the wall so they can just tack things in and hang them up. We can do strings across that, where they can hang things um, as they're working. Right now it's kind of a little bit of a catch-all, but you know, we're getting organized. So let's go upstairs and we'll, see, we'll show you the residency living space. So here we are upstairs. Um, we have space for four visiting artists at a time. Each artist will get their own bedroom and bathroom. And then we have a community kitchen, which is uh, filled with things that have been donated to us, including glasses and plates and silverware and pots and pans uh, to help make this as lively and real a kitchen as we can. We're gracious for, grateful for all of that. And then in here, this room is really one of the 
one of my favorite rooms um, because it shows the true history of the building. Um, our builders, the Osprey Custom Carpentry, Pete Badcock, they really took exceptional care of these original hand-hewn beams from the original building, uh, which was built sometime in the late 1790s. Um, and they're just glowing now. They've done a beautiful, beautiful job. And it really makes this a welcoming space for the artists to hang out when they're not working. And then there are four bedrooms. I'll show you two of them now. <clears throat> the first one, um, which has also got these gorgeous beams. So we're, again, this is part, this building, this room is in the front of the building, which is the original part of the building built around 1798. Um, and so this room is also ADA accessible. Um, it's right across the hall from our lift, our elevator, that will allow an artist with mobility needs to get up to the second floor. And then if you look in here, the bathroom in here is an ADA compatible bathroom. It was really important to us to be sure that we can accommodate the needs of any artist who ends up being selected through our uh, application process. And if that means there are mobility needs or other um, different ability needs, we're gonna try and accommodate those as best we can. As you can see, I mentioned the elevator. So this is a lift that has uh, the capacity for a person in a wheelchair plus another person. So at least two people and anyone in a wheelchair or with a walker or anything like that will have easy access up and down from the first floor to the second. So the residencies will run for six weeks and um, we hope to be at a point where we'll, we're able to do three residencies a year, um, at least uh, in the early part of, of our occupation of this particular building, you know. We're just getting started. We, of course, there were many delays with COVID and um, supply chain and all of that kind of stuff. So it was really hard for us to say exactly when we were going to be done. So we didn't, we weren't able to plan ahead for fear of having to cancel. Um, so what we're working on now is projects for the fall and probably the first full residency sometime in the early spring of 2024 professional development opportunity. We've got uh, a wonderful woman who used to work for the Maryland State Arts Council. She's coming over for Baltimore, Dana Parsons, and she's doing a four hour session on strategic planning and community engagement. And so from the perspective of the Maryland State Arts Council, which is funding all of our grantee organizations here as well, it's all about like, what can we do to help you as an organization do more for the community that you serve and you know, get you out of your buildings and into the rest of the communities around the county, making sure that we're really fully serving the people of Kent County. Yes, we have raised what we needed to raise to complete the building. Um, we did not take on extra debt to complete the building. So we carry a mortgage for the building, which we purchased in 2017. But other than that, the construction and renovations are all paid for, which is a nice feeling um, and is only possible because of the incredible generosity of the people of Kent County. I mean, you know, time and again, I was essentially blown away by the response to people when they came in and walked through the building and heard about the plans and the mission going forward and sort of this, you know, this next half century of the Kent Cultural Alliance, which of course was previously the Kent County Arts Council, but was started in 1975. So we're very close to our 50th anniversary in 2025. Yeah, <clears throat> so the total cost is about $2.3 million. Um, just over a million of that came from the state of Maryland in the form of different grants. So the town of Chestertown, particularly Case Des Moines, helped us with the Maryland Department of um, Housing and Community Development. They have these programs, programs called Community Legacy Grants, um, and they're capital grants for investment in spaces that are going to be community spaces. And many of our friends and partners in the community have received these grants as well, um, but total almost $500,000 came from them. Um, and that was by far the biggest single grant that we received. Uh, also, the stories of the Chesapeake, Maryland Heritage Areas and the Maryland Historic Trust. We had almost $300,000 in grants from them. 
Um, and then the balance of that state funding came in the form of a bond bill from Senator Hershey and Delegate Jay Jacobs, and that was 250000 So that brought us to just over a million dollars in funding from the state. There's no question. I mean, the support in the community is real. It, um, it's authentic. Um, the anticipation in the community now is also real um, to get in and, and see the space. And also, I think probably to, to see what we're going to do. Like, what is it actually going to look like? You know, we've talked a lot about what this residency program is and social impact art and um, partnerships with community organizations, but, um, but Mostly it's been talk, right? So um, we've, we've had the good fortune, um, really since I got here in 2017, uh, later in, midway through 2017, we've had two official resident artists. Um, in 2018, we had Jason Patterson, who now is working uh, at the Academy Art Museum doing programming and working for the Star Center at Washington College doing programming. Um, he has done extraordinary pieces of artwork, including a piece that we commissioned from him at the end of his residency to celebrate Isaac Mason, who now everyone knows uh, was an enslaved person who actually was enslaved by the family that owned this building in the 1830s and 40s and escaped via the Underground Railroad and and lived out his life in Massachusetts and published an autobiography late in life. And it's from that autobiography that we know that he was in this building and also from that autobiography that we commissioned Marlon Saunders to write the musical Isaac, which premiered in June of 2022. So just beyond the grand opening, it's like, well, hit the ground running. The grand opening is the 25th of March. The following weekend, we have the 14th annual Kent County Poetry Festival. Um, and because we have the space this year, on Saturday, April 1st, um, during the day, we're going to hold the local celebrity poets um, presentation here in our building. And that's at one o'clock in the afternoon. And that'll be hosted by James Hall from the Lit House at Washington College, who's our partner, uh, along with the Book Plate and Ortiz Studios in producing the festival. Um, that night, we'll actually be at the Norman James Theater. Um, so um, because we need a slightly bigger space, uh, we have Patricia Spears Jones coming as our poet this year. Um, and Maureen Corrigan is returning and she'll be doing the interview when Patricia is done with doing her reading. Or really the first big installation um, after our grand opening. And that is we are hosting with Stories of the Chesapeake, the um, Smithsonian on Main Street traveling program. This program is called Crossroads, Change in Rural Communities. And it's basically a retrospective of what life has been like in rural communities across the country in the last century. Um, they bring an exhibit with them. It is all um, stories and pieces that have been collected by Smithsonian curators over time. Um, it's basically a put together exhibit. It's just they they bring you the pieces and you put it together. Um, so it will be in our gallery from the 22nd of April until right after Tea Party. So it's exciting.